Inside Michigan Basketball, delivered by UPS. For the first time since 1963, Michigan's men's basketball team played three consecutive top 10 teams. During that 63 campaign, they played Duke, New York University, and UCLA. This time in 2014, the Wolverines would have a home game, bookended by two of the toughest places in all the conference to play. A happy ending at the Kohl's Center in Wisconsin and a thrilling game at the Breslin Center in East Lansing. But first at home against the 10th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes, a club who had lost four in a row to the Wolverines and were trying to prove a point. I love it when we have opportunities to show how hard we work, how smart we are, how you're such a great team. I love it when we have opportunities to do that. This is one of those great opportunities against one of the premier clubs in America. Right, so we, we got to go bring it, and, they, and they're, gonna, they're not going to know what hit them. Right, we're going to bring everything that we got. As expected Wednesday night, it was a Big Ten tug of war between two top 25 teams. Michigan was seeking its first 6-0 Big Ten start since 2003. The story was the inside game of Iowa's Melson Basabi against the outside game of Nick Stauskas. Basabi would convert 7 of 10 shots for 15 points in the opening half using his muscle and his strength inside. Marble at the other and left baseline, no. Rebound by Basabi, yes, and he's fouled. Stauskas would counter with a couple of key triples to pace the Wolverines attack. Stauskas, a deep three, splash! Hit it over McCabe, second time, a triple from Stauskas, ties it up. Stauskas would match Basabi with 15 in the opening half. Jordan Morgan helped the cause with eight, and Glenn Robinson was ferocious on the glass with eight caroms. Left side, Stauskas for three, short, rebounded by Robinson, pumps it on the deck, reverse layup to it. The half featured five lead changes and seven ties, but it was Michigan leading at the break, 38-34. It wasn't so much different to start the second. Stauskas picked up right where he left off. Marvel is caught. Albrecht to the trailer. Stauskas steps into a three. Give me that. Nick Stauskas with his third triple of the game. Michigan would up their lead to seven, and Jordan Morgan showed off his soft hands inside to keep the Hawkeyes honest. Michigan right to left, feeds Morgan, running the four, leaning it in. The Wolverines would keep pushing. Glenn Robinson on an aggressive take inside to jam it down and bring down the house. Right side Robinson. Dribble drive. Jams it down! Bring it down the house! And Spike Albrecht would steal the inbound pass, hit a 15-foot jumper, and the Wolverines had their biggest lead at 11. The Hawkeyes would pull within five. Then Zach Irvin went on his own personal 5-0 run with a three and a fast break layup. Ball poked loose, grabbed by Levert, up ahead for Irvin. He's behind the pack, lays it up, lays it in! Aaron White would catch fire and cause problems inside to get the visitors within four, but Zach Irvin hit a massive three to give U of N some breathing room. The Wolverines would hit their free throws down the stretch, and they would knock off the Hawkeyes. 75-67, the biggest loss of the year for Iowa this season. Your team is used to those late-game adverse conditions. How much have they grown, do you think? Oh, a great deal. I mean, that's all they had to do. I mean, they, they there was no experience out there. You got to get better, and you got to grow. And I, I just really like they've accepted it. I mean, this is a really coachable group, and we are, you know, we're demanding as coaches. There's a lot of things that they go through to be prepared for a team, and, and preparations is an asset to us. And uh, they buy into it, and it shows in the game. When we come back. A battle of giants in the Big Ten. The only two teams left undefeated in conference play and the toughest place maybe in all the conference to win. Michigan, Michigan State is next. Inside Michigan Basketball, delivered by UPS, is brought to you in part by the University of Michigan C.S. Mott Children's Hospital and by Absol Pure Water, the official bottled water of the Michigan Wolverines. you got to embrace this challenge today knowing right that you can start strong and finish strong doesn't do, do good if you can't do both of those things you got to start strong man you got to be right there in their face right at the beginning saying what do we say we in here we in here. we need to say that over and over again tonight we in here right we play as one team we we, we have been so successful <coughs> lately because there's one one it's just been about a team there's been no agenda zero agendas all year long and we must continue that today. We may get into individual battles with people. Embrace that challenge, go after that challenge, but it doesn't become you against him. There's other people on the floor during that time. 
You are doing things right now together because you feel it, you're really well connected. You gotta trust that, the staff, our plays, our, 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 our scouting reports, everything. And with a nights like tonight, the, the champions outplay their opponents because they're more committed. This has gotta be a game about more committed, right, to win. If you're coming in here, band of brothers, you're coming in here, you look around and you say, just us blue jerseys out here. We got some of our fans way up at the top. We got a few family members behind us. Ain't anybody else in there? Just us, right? And we got to go in there like a band right there, and we just do what do what we have to do. But it's got to be commitment, major commitment by everybody. And then lastly, right? We know that our training, whatever they can throw at us, you have had it happen to you. Whether it's our sprints, right? We talked about last night. Whether it's it, it's just the pace of our practice. Whether it's those times that you go to that training room all summer long that you're in the training room for this moment right now. That's why you did it. To go in there and say, come on, I wasn't maybe ready for this last year up here. I'm ready for you right now. Let's go get the game. Before you step out there, understand something. It's gonna be about toughness and togetherness. And before you finish your race, we know all races are determined in those last couple milliseconds. And you gotta run through the tape. But before you go out there, all I wanna know is one thing. Stay seated if you're scared. It's gonna work, coach. Go. Michigan came out focused and red hot early on, hitting four of their first six shots with Nick Stauskas leading the way. Stauskas rises and fires from 15, and another bucket for Nick Stauskas. The Wolverines were up by six early. MSU would get closer, though, behind the steady shooting of Gary Harris and the hard hat mentality of Matt Costello. Costello, left bloke corner, hook shot in the lane, drops down, and he got a foul. Later, the Spartans would put together a 12-1 run and take care of business against the Wolverines inside and getting out in transition. Valentine recoup. No looks to Kaminsky for the easy lay -in. John Beeline wants the timeout. State would extend the run 21-7 and lead by eight before the Wolverines would use an 8-2 surge of their own behind Karis Levert's big three. He turns the corner, drives on Harris, the kick out. Levert's open for three, flat. But the Spartans would close the half with four unanswered, and the home team led it 36-30. Michigan came out with a different mindset in the second half, pounding it inside and trading punches with the Spartans. Long dumps it inside Morgan, put it up in the left hand, and it crawled through. It would become literal later on, with Jordan Morgan and Keith Appling having to be separated and drawing technical fouls. Shortly thereafter, big threes by Lavert and Stauskas changed the game. Lavert looks, wait. Feeds Horford right back to Levert. Open for three. Get in there. Got it. Here comes Michigan right to left. They've got numbers. Levert in a gallop. Leaves it for Stuskis. Ice the three. Bang. Once the Wolverines took the lead, they never looked back. And their freshman point guard carried them from the line down the stretch. Derek Walton hit nine of his ten free throws. And Michigan celebrates something no Wolverines team has ever done. Beating three top ten teams in a row. 80 to 75 the final and Michigan is the last unbeaten in the Big Ten. down 50-50 balls at the other end, checking enough to get 50-50 balls, and then guys stepping up and making big shots when we need them. Big shots. Big shots, big foul shots when we need them. It was, it was a huge force. And you've had a great mentality, whether we were playing uh, Holy Cross or playing these guys, is coming to every night. I mean, seriously. And you brought it tonight, and we are doing great. We, we, we've done great thus far. But now we go into it again. So we just got to have that same mentality. Don't lose what got you here. Oh, right? Yeah. Right? No. Right? Don't lose what got you here. You, and, you, and guess what? You know what practice will be like. You know I won't let you lose what got you here. Right? Oh, yeah. You know that. Hey, Coach, you know that. I got to give a shout-out, man, to the scout team, man. It was nice yeah. and physical. Yeah. Thirty-five years to the day, January 25th, 1979, was the last time Michigan came into East Lansing and beat a Michigan State team ranked in the top five. You did it on this Saturday night. How? It's tough to put your finger on it. I'm better at watching the video, but I really think that um, you know our kids were really connected throughout the game. Um, I think it has a lot to do, obviously, with their injuries. Uh, losing Brandon Dawson is a big. Let's not forget about that. Um, but at the same time, we we really uh, are connected group. Um, 
We, we play defense together. We play offense together. We're very unselfish. Our assists are always really good. Our numbers are. And then we got some guys that can make shots. And, and when we're not necessarily a, a juggernaut uh, defensively, but we're getting better and we can score points so that while we while we get better defensively that holds us over wasn't that the difference in the second half coach your defense more so than your offense I, I mean our defense was good and then we could we really felt um, that we could get out and run on them and everybody can because that's what, what the, that's what they did to us in the first half they had 11 transition baskets 11 transition points so in the second half we had to do that with them so we did get some of those and next three was one of those things that was huge for us Karis had a great pass to Derek to get us back up in there so it's all part of this uh, the, the maturation of this team is coming in here winning this building you guys have won in some really tough environments Cole Center Minnesota's a tough place to play yeah. coach here as well and your team has done something no Michigan team's ever done beat three straight top 10 teams I know you keep it in perspective could you ever imagine as you looked at this stretch that you would have gone three and zero during the stretch you know I avoided looking at this stretch so I didn't imagine much about it Matt but I did I do like the idea that I know that if you're gonna whether you're home or away um, if you're gonna win in the in the Big Ten you, you the Wisconsin and Michigan State you better have some success against them uh, I was the, the newcomer to that mix tremendous team beat the heck out of Northwestern today um, they are they're a really good team so um, it, it's all it says right now is after seven games uh, we've been able to beat some of the top of the league teams got 11 more to do we got to keep doing it every one of your guys use this word when we talk to them poise and I thought it's perfectly describing the way your team plays especially on the road that was uh, that was really good I'm trying to put together you know with, with, over years I, I you know I, I always thought that it, unlike football you have a 500 record on the road you, you had a really good team you had a really good team and and you know we've been trying to get to that point and uh, so what whatever it is to bring our guys poised the coaching staff prepares them you've seen our practices Matt we're trying to make it a really tough environment for them and then when they get in this while it's tough and they have their moments I think they settle down and can handle it a little bit better uh, once they get do it a few times not that he necessarily needed to but your point guard I don't know if he grew up but he sure became a floor leader tonight don't you think yeah I'm really proud of Derek today he did everything that we asked him to do um, you know yeah, except he blew up the second play and I got mad at him but he's he'll learn he'll, he will learn more of what he's got to do but I, I love um, what he brings to this team and, and as I as I told the Big Ten Network um, this um, this young man is loved by his teammates I, I've never seen a freshman he and Zach Irvin they love these two guys and that's rare when the guy's out there he's starting point guard obviously he's put spike where spike comes off the bench all spikes best friends love Derek so it's really good he's united us as well congratulations thanks Matt when we come back the Al Rose Steel Iron Man of the week who made the biggest difference in maize and blue So our Al Rose Steel Iron Man of the Week, Derek Walton, a new career best at Michigan State, and what an effort for you and your ball club. Uh, did the game slow down for you a little bit here? Yeah, um, film study has helped me a lot, and um, I'm just seeing the game, and, you know, with a different set of eyes, it feels like now, uh, instead of having to play at that frantic pace, and um, it's just helping us as a unit. Career best 19 points, nine of them coming from the free throw line on a 9 for 10 effort. What do you think about with the pressure and the game on the line, so to speak? Um... I know I, I know my teammates are counting on me to make those shots, so um, I want to deliver for them because you know you know we so close as a unit, and um, we just want to uh, just come in and get this win. And uh, I knew those free throws on the stretch would be a key. How we play? Uh, How we play? Mark, Michigan. Tough. We're gonna be Stay with us later on. The unique experience that brought Sean Longren to a walk-on position here on the Michigan basketball team. The coach presented by Tim Hortons and it's brought to you from John and Canton. How impressed are you with his growth and maturity on the court as a leader? Not just his game, but as a leader. I see this incremental change in him that's been going on uh, in his time with us. Where, you know, here, here comes a kid from Canada, a kid from a prep school. He comes up here and, you know, he's good. And, and all these things of organized basketball. And he is, he's, he, he really loves Michigan. 
He loves playing for Michigan, and he loves you know all the attention that we were able to give him to develop him as a player. So he 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 loves. This is what he's dreamt of his whole life. So it's really an, it, he, I love the way he's taking that, and now he's taking it and bringing it to his teammates because he believes in it. All right, when we come back, why a Wolverine backup might have a future as a basketball scout. We'll explain right after this. Welcome back to Inside Michigan Basketball. Sean Larnagrain, Fishers, Indiana, had wrapped up his high school career and hung up his high tops. From the same hometown as current freshman Zach Irvin, he watched last year's NCAA title game with no idea what the future would hold. We watched the Final Four together. And so he's obviously rooting for Michigan real hard. You know, I'm just I'm kind of hoping for a good game. You know, I just want to see a close one. And the national championship again comes up. And like I'm from Indiana, you know, never had any ties to Michigan. No, no real reason to root for them. So I, again, just want to see a good game. I was like, dang, that's pretty awesome. And then this all comes about and all of a sudden everything in my house goes blue and, and it's just, it's kind of wild. He was on his way to Indiana University to begin his life as a regular student when he got a phone call last June. There was an open gym, and NCAA title game legend Spike Albrecht would be there. We wanted to play against him because we had just saw him play in the national championship. We're like, hey, let's let's play against this guy and uh, and see how we stack up. I didn't know anyone. I was just going out playing, having a little bit of fun, and guys were like going at me. I was like, it's just a pickup game. Like, it's like, what's going on out here? But uh, it was fun, you know. There, it was competitive. We had some good games and. There's some good players there. But we ended up getting on the same team. I don't know if he even remembers this, but first possession, he just drove it right down the middle of my back, back door from the corner, and he just dropped it off to me, and I dunked on somebody, and I was just like, hey, I like playing with this kid. I seen him, and I was like, who's this kid dunking everything? You know, I seen him in the warm-up line kind of thing, and um, he is, he's super athletic. He was catching lobs and stuff, so I was like, you don't see that from, you know, many 6'5 guys. Afterwards, we were talking, and he was like, where are you going to play ball next year? I was like, I'm not. I'm actually just going to IU and stuff like that. He's like, oh, that's crazy. And as we were leaving, and I kind of shook up with him, I was like, hey, if Michigan needs any walk-ons, you know where to find me. Completely joking. Like, not even thinking there was a chance in the world. And he just kind of stopped and looked at me and was like, hey, bro, I think we do. I think our roster's not full. You should, you, you should look into that. And I, from there, we, just, we, we texted the next couple days, um, got a phone number, got an email, and that's how it all started. Lonegren contacted Michigan assistant coach Jeff Meyer, and days later, he found himself sitting in head coach John Beeline's office. It's crazy how fast it happened, but you know, I'm really happy for him. He seems to like it here a lot. Life on the scout team often includes mimicking some of the best players in the nation. Arizona, I was Aaron Gordon. Um, I can't really mimic 6'10", you know, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a decent athlete, so, you know, just trying to get up there and get rebounds, put backs, um, stuff around the bucket. Duke, I got to be Rodney Hood. Um, that was fun. He's a lefty, so you kind of got to get your mind set to go left instead of right for me, but good at attacking the basket and just, you know, he fills it. So that was a fun week for us, too, because you got to be a guy who really could do it all. So scout team, scout team's a lot of fun. The scouting report on Lonegren, someday down the road, he could find himself in the regular playing rotation. The whole kind of surreal feeling has passed now to where it was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm here. So now it's like, okay, we're mid-season, we gotta get better. Um, so being a part of the scout team and uh, the bench mob is we've kind of given ourselves that name. Uh, we just work really hard day in and day out to try to try to make the guys better and um, you know, get, get W's. What did you think now you got this guy you found on your team? I mean, do you feel like he owes you a favor or something? No, no, no. You know, he said thank you to me so many times that it's starting to get irritating. So I'm like, dude, you're, you're fine. Like, you're here, man. You're part of the team. Like, stop thanking me. Um, but he, he works really hard, and he's a gym rat. And, you know, we're just happy to have him on board. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Doug Karsh. It's great stuff. We're glad you could join us on this week's edition of Inside Michigan Basketball. Hope you can be back with us next week when we recap a couple of Michigan games against two teams from the state of Indiana. The home tilt against Purdue and the road game in Bloomington. Until then, enjoy your week, everybody, and go blue. Inside Michigan Basketball, delivered by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. Yeah, 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 yeah.